Hello everyone, Swords and Bones 2 is on its way to Nintendo Switch, a game where you use your sword and magical attacks to take on the forces of evil. The game is released on July 7th and the price is set at $10. In this review I discussed whether it is worth buying. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I review new games every week. So this is a game about how evil demons have invaded the human world. Although the world is infested with a lot of dangerous creatures, there is one in particular that is worse than the others, namely the main antagonist of the game, an enemy named the Sight Demon. It is now up to Princess Berenice to take up the fight against the forces of evil and put an end to the evil demon once and for all. The narrative is presented in a simple but effective way. At the beginning you can read about the game's main plot, and during the game you can see small cutscenes that provide additional information. This is not a story driven game at all, but the limited information we get is enough to feel invested in the story. Anyone who appreciates side-scrolling platform games may find joy in this adventure. In the game you have to go through a number of worlds where each world consists of 10 levels, one of which is a boss fight. You start in the city of Gaudia, but we later explore forests and mines and a few other places. The levels are relatively short and if you are in a good flow it usually takes no more than a couple of minutes to reach the next level, so if you are efficient this can be a relatively quick experience. I consider the level of difficulty to be quite low. It is not a very challenging game, most often it's about learning about how the enemies act and how they behave, and if you lose you start over from the same level you died on. You have unlimited continues. When it comes to skills, you mostly use the sword, but can also buy various magical attacks. The sword has a relatively short range, it might be good to get used to it to avoid taking unnecessary damage. You can jump by pressing A, and the option is also available to upgrade to double jump, which will be required to reach all the treasures that are scattered everywhere. In general, swinging the sword and jumping is quite easy and feels smooth. The control is responsive, and if you die, it is my opinion that it's not due to a poorly designed control. Rather, it's about the player's own ability to cope with the challenges given. I consider the magic spells to be a good complement to the sword, mostly depending on the fact that they can be effective against enemies that you want to keep at a distance. The tornado has a long range, and the lightning does damage in a larger area, so they work great as a complement, but you have limited magic, so it might be good to be frugal. The enemies are varied, with each species having its own characteristics, however, what I find less good are the game's bosses. I perceive them as very easy to eliminate and offer little resistance. Look at this terrifying fire skull. It is not as dangerous as it looks. It just bounces around the room and as long as you stay out of the way and plan your attacks carefully, it's really no match. I actually think it's a bit boring and would have preferred if the bosses had more mechanics, maybe a few faces and were a bit tougher, so this is in my opinion one of the worst aspects of the game, that the bosses are too easy. Swords and Bones 2 is a game that I think can appeal to those who appreciate light-hearted side-scrolling adventures. The difficulty is relatively low and if you are used to this type of game it should not be difficult to get far. However, I don't know the length of the game or if there is any replay value. This is due to a glitch that makes it impossible to progress. At a level further into the game my character is frozen in place and basically can't do anything. However, I have notified the publisher so I assume the issue will be fixed soon, but until then I recommend waiting to buy. It's no fun buying a broken game, but my overall impressions are that this is an entertaining platform game and if they get the issues right it's worth a purchase, but until everything is fixed, hold on to your money. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I review new games every week. Have a nice day, see ya!